Hello everyone, I'm Joel Chasnoff and welcome to FIDF Live. Today we are up on the northern border. As you can see, Mount Hermon, the Hermon mountain capped with snow behind me. It's January 2022 and already it's been a very busy year for the IDF. Two missiles were fired from Gaza toward Tel Aviv. They landed thankfully in the Mediterranean Sea. A drone was launched by Hezbollah from right behind me in Lebanon. It was intercepted by IDF forces. And in general, this northern border is very hot, even though it looks pastoral and beautiful and quiet. We're going to begin by meeting Lieutenant Lahav. He's an officer in the IDF liaison unit. They work with UNIFIL up here on the northern border. I want to begin by asking you, what is UNIFIL? We use this term all the time. Can you explain? UNIFIL is a peacekeeping force, belongs to the UN, and its full name is United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. And I need to ask, what is your job specifically then in dealing with UNIFIL? I am uh, the liaison officer that positioned in the western sector of this uh, borderline. I'm connecting between UNIFIL and LAF uh, to the brigade and the brigade commander and uh, wrapping all of it also uh, about the border crossing between Israel and Lebanon. And by the way, we can see them right behind us patrolling. And I do know that you, as well as anyone, are aware of what's happening on this northern border. So what do you foresee for the year 2022? What kind of threats does the IDF need to be especially aware of? Well, of course, we have the uh, long and continued uh, base uh, and expanding of Hezbollah along the uh, border. So I want to follow up on what you just said, mentioning that Hezbollah is basing itself in villages where civilians reside. How does the IDF handle this fact? The IDF doesn't want to hurt innocent civilians. They are not the enemy. Hezbollah and its terror activity is the enemy. And uh, Hezbollah takes advantage over that and bases itself inside civilian villages and cities. And this is another challenge that uh, the IDF has to face. And it's a challenge that the IDF has faced for many years. Israel's enemies have and continue to embed among civilians, knowing that this complicates the conflicts for us. There is a uh, Hezbollah militant uh, climbing on the concrete near Mike 6 at the moment. Please uh, report, Unifil. Okay. Lieutenant Lahav, give us some insight into what just happened. Um, we just saw a uh, Hezbollah militant uh, arriving. I can at, see him right now over my at shoulder. At the blue line, which is a violation of the 1701 UNSCR. Actually, the presence of Hezbollah in all south of Lebanon is a violation. And uh, we have, as part of our job here, to report uh, online, live to UNIFIL about this incident. Well, Lieutenant Lahav, I want to thank you so much for everything that you do, seeing this operation uh, carry out in real time with Hezbollah behind us. It really gives us an insight uh, that we weren't expecting to see, uh, but nonetheless appreciate. Uh, stay safe to you and all the soldiers you work with, and thank you for joining us on FIDF Live. The battlefield is not what it used to be. Limits between the different dimensions, such as air, land, and sea, are blurring and creating a more complex arena to operate in. Israel's chief artillery officer, Brigadier General Neri Horowitz, stated just recently in the 2021 UVID Drone Tech Conference that these changes require the IDF to work multidimensionally, combining the different forces' capabilities. We went to the north to visit the Artillery Corps Sky Rider Unit to see how this multi-dimensional cooperation looks like in action. We are standing here only half a mile from the Syrian border. You can see behind me half a mile is the Syrian border, the fence, and the United Nations post. And only a couple of miles up north is Mount Hermon and the Lebanon border as well. In the past few months, the tension has increased. The enemy is trying new ways and all kinds of ways to gather intelligence through the sky, with drones, through the land, even through the sea. But we are here ready for everything. We have the best technology and improving it all the time. Our soldiers are prepared to deal with any threat. In his words, Brigadier General Horowitz stated that the unmanned vehicle world is crucial 
to how the IDF will operate in the future as they work hand in hand with the boots on the ground and manned forces. Skyrider's unit's mission is to give uh, tactical intelligence in all of Israel borders to whoever needs it, including the ground forces. The ground forces rely on us because we give them the information that they need to get a broader picture of the battlefield and to know better what's going on and what's waiting for them one step ahead. A few weeks ago we were in a different area. Um, there were some uh, terrorists who made a terrorist attack and uh, some special forces uh, wanted to arrest them. During the arrest, um, we, we identified one man trying to escape through the roof. Uh, we alarmed the forces and it helped caught him. And I think it's the, the excellent example of what we can give the ground forces in real time. To do a mission here on the northern border means uh, to be out on the field, on the call, for many hours. At a moment's notice, the teams in the unit can be called to a mission. They carry the aircraft in a bag on their back and assemble it within minutes. The moment we arrive the, into the field, we gather our equipment, we assemble it as fast as we can, and we deploy the UAV within minutes because we know that our reaction time is crucial to the soldiers on field. The Skyrider unit is cooperating with uh, several units in the IDF. We can secure ground forces. We can really guide the people on the ground in each and every turn they're taking in the battlefield. We can give them the intelligence from the eye in the sky and uh, just guide their way into safety. In the rapidly changing battlefield, the Sky Rider unit's technology is life-saving, both for the forces on the ground and for the people living in Israel. We're now in the northern part of Israel observing an exercise by the Kfir Infantry Brigade. The women of the Red Unit are here to simulate the enemy so that the soldiers of the IDF can get a feel for what it would actually be like to have an enemy in combat. And as it turns out right now, on this hill, there are members of the Red Unit camouflaged in hiding. We'll start here with Private Chaya, Chaya is looking out onto the mountain ahead of us, trying to spot IDF soldiers. Her job is to operate the theoretical anti-tank missile, which is also used against vehicles and people killing with shrapnel. And Private Chaya, tell us a little bit about your job up on the mountain here today. Today, I have this eyepiece focused on the roads there along the mountain. And as soon as we see IDF soldiers approaching our area, either with cars or big groups of people, so we'll shoot them with a theoretical missile. Personally, I'm honored to be here. I believe it's a privilege not only to serve in the IDF, but to be in this unit specifically, because I really feel like I'm saving lives, because we're giving these soldiers a chance to have at least a little bit of life experience before they have to fight people for real. We're now going to meet Red Unit soldiers at the first station on the base. They are the lookouts today. They are the ones who are going to notify other Red Unit soldiers along the base if they notice IDF soldiers so they could attack with simulated ammunition. So Corporal Moria, tell me about your job today and the job of this Red Unit team. As part of the Red Unit, we play the role of the enemy. So what we're doing today is we are on the lookout. If we see troops, we have to let the, the rest of our forces know. And um, that way they can be prepared for when they enter our air base. Working our way deeper into the base, we now come to the RPG team, the rocket propelled grenade team of the Red Unit. And to make it as absolutely realistic as possible, the members of this RPG Red Unit team are willing to wait for hours lying in ambush so that they can spring an attack at just the right moment and catch IDF forces off guard in this drill. Again, sticking with the idea of reality, that is also why their uniforms and weaponry are not the type used in the IDF, but they are the type used by the enemy. Different uniforms and different weaponry that we know is used by the enemies, again, to make it as realistic as possible.
The Kfir Brigade participated in a real-time war exercise, realistic because it was unpredictable, and also realistic because an enemy awaited them, the women of the Red Unit. We're at a tiny outpost here in the north of Israel called Termos. It's being manned right now by soldiers of the 931st Battalion of the Nachal Brigade. And I'm joined by Sergeant Yonatan. Sergeant Yonatan is a commander in Nachal, and I'd like to thank you for joining us on FIDF Live. And I'll begin by asking you, what is your mission up here in this tiny outpost in the north? Well, our main mission out here is mainly to protect uh, ourselves, protect the border, and protect the nearby uh, villages. So when you actually have a mission, what are you and your soldiers doing? Well, our main mission is mainly to patrol the border, patrol through the villages, keep the area safe and show presence of uh, Israel out here in the border. And what are you looking for? Is there something specific that you are uh, on the lookout for as you patrol? Anything suspicious. So what are the biggest challenges that you face as a team commander and also that your soldiers face up well, here? Well, first of all, it's a big responsibility. I have the lives of 12 soldiers on my back. My main job is mainly to keep the order. Uh, uh, command the patrols and so on, and worry for my soldiers. So last question, Sergeant Yonatan, are you always up here in the north, or do you and your soldiers move around? Well, we always move around. It's very dynamic. Wherever we need we go. Uh, for example, eight months ago, we were in Gaza Strip during the whole uh, situation there, and now we're here. And it's always different, and you need to be ready for any kind of atmosphere. We're going to spend some time with Max. He's a lone soldier from my hometown of Chicago. So for that reason alone, it's great to hang out with you a bit. Yeah, yeah great to be here with you. Max, first of all, I want to hear about your mission up here on the border. What's it like for you as a lone soldier to be serving up here so close to enemy territory? So it's really something special. Um, yeah, right now we are on the Lebanon border and really close. Um, we have a lot of missions that we do all the time. And uh, it's something different. It's something I only get to do once in my lifetime. And it's a special feeling to be here, to be relevant, to uh, kind of, we're, we're the security for the country, for anything that goes on up here. So it's really something, it's a special feeling. Before we finish up, Max, I want to sort of bring it back to something more serious. All the anti-Semitism happening in the world right now. In Texas a couple of weeks ago, we saw an incident at a synagogue. Does this affect you? Do you think about it? It's something that definitely affects me because um, America is my home too. I lived in America for 22 years before I made Aliyah. It's something I think about all the time. I mean, me and my friends talk about. It's something we need to raise awareness about. It's a very serious th um, thing. No one in the world should feel uncomfortable about, um, about being Jewish or Muslim or Christian or their religion. Um, yeah, so it definitely affects me. And um, that's why I'm also, I'm here, I'm, I'm proud to be an IDF soldier and to stand here and protect our country because at the end of the day, we have one place that, that we can call home and that's, uh, that's Israel, that's here. Well, Max, thank you so much for spending some time with us. As a fellow Chicagoan, I appreciate uh, the move you made to be a Chayal Boded lone soldier. Stay safe to you and all of your uh, friends here in the squad. Yeah, thank you very much and thank you guys for coming and talking to us. As we've seen, protecting the northern border is a complex operation. It requires the coordination of air, land, and sea forces, as well as intelligence that works around the clock 24-7 to discover the threats to the state of Israel. We can't be fooled. The view behind me is absolutely beautiful, but just because that is so, that does not mean that we are at peace. In these early days of 2022, we also cannot help but think about all of the anti-Semitism that we are seeing in the world around us, whether it's in the state of Texas or in Europe. One thing it does make us feel is more appreciative than ever for the state of Israel and for the brave men and women who protect it in the IDF. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Joel Chaznoff. And I'll see you next time on FIDF Live.
Don't only look in the past, we bridge into the future. And they dreamed of going to Israel. Israel, a place where the Jews can be free. These uniforms are different uniforms. These uniforms are not striped. And for us, this is victory. We remember. We remember. We remember.